Hello, buddy. Welcome back to another episode. I'm back with Hani today. So Hani is the founder of Mount Bee Kombucha. So thank you very, very much for being here. Uh, really glad that you joined me. And after so many days of us trying to fix out our time, but we are trying. Lastly, finally doing it. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much, Lakshit, for having me here. My pleasure. My pleasure. So before we get into any conversation or I ask you questions or we talk about anything, uh, it would be wonderful if you could introduce yourself and what you do. That would be great. Absolutely. So my name is Hani Islam. I founded Mountain Bee Kombucha a couple of years ago in 2019. Um, I wanted to bring fermented foods to the market and make people understand how important they are um, for for their guts, for their overall well-being, and also the fact that, that they are more sustainable form of foods. So it was my way of uh, telling that story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and like were you were you always there in the food space only or were you even interested in other food other spaces as well? Oh yeah, so <laughs> I used to work with uh, an MNC for almost nine and a half years. Um, that's how I started my career. And um, during that time, I realized that I have to do something for myself also to keep myself motivated in my day job. And I figured that food is a medium for me to um, feel inspired and feel happy and look forward to the the morning mm-hmm. so food gave me this opportunity to explore my creativity to explore um, my values per se how what i want um, to do later on in my life probably and um, i started to do weekend weekend uh, exploring of the city's cuisine um, i would go to restaurants or uh, even cafes uh, for food review. Uh, and then uh, sooner than later, I was uh, involved every weekend in some or the other activity. Uh, and that's how I also uh, grew my fondness uh, for taking up food as a career option. And during this time, uh, while I was still working with uh, in my job, I got an opportunity to uh, volunteer for a food festival okay. um, uh, in Goa. Um, and that's when I uh, stumbled upon the fermented foods category. And, mm-hmm. and it was in 2016. And okay. from there, my love for kombucha and fermented foods began. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. And uh, so, and were you, were you always like, um, so how did you explore, how did you get to know that fermented food is more sustainable? So what was, like, how, how did that exploration happen? Okay, so it was more like a, like a light bulb moment. I was looking for something to hang on to. I was already in the, in the field, um, uh, figuring out. And then when I started to learn about fermented foods, uh, the first trigger point was in Goa. And it, it made me realize that there is a whole bunch of... Um, foods that people eat that are um, that are so good for you and they have been used by civilizations even without any scientific backing and only now the, the, there's a whole science about uh, food and gut health relations so there have been people who've been already who already knew about this just that they didn't tell the whole world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the more uh, surprising fact was that those foods taste like nothing else. They were so unique in flavors. They were so um, different in textures, and that kind of uh, grabbed my attention. Um, kombucha was definitely the most uh, fun and uh, fun for me because it was a beverage. I personally have inclination towards beverages, mm-hmm. uh, but it was not until the next year in 2017 was when I actually tasted kombucha when I was. Um, in the U.S. for my assignment. So from there, my actual uh, journey, uh, I, I was following my uh, nose probably. I, I found how it is made, um, what is the best way to get a culture. I, I found a friend who was home brewing, and then I requested if she would give me a culture. I brought it back to India and I started experimenting and I so fell in love with what the output was you you start with something so basic as tea which is so uh, which is so important for indian uh, indian agriculture and economy and then you 
work with it and make something entirely different, different mm-hmm. and new yeah. uh, so th- all those things help me uh, understand uh, about this category of food um, made me understand that it is it, it is some it is a kind of food that does not re- require a lot of energy to become uh, to be consumed and it also increases the nutritional value of food so those things really resonated with me uh, and i even though there was absolutely there was no market for uh, for kombucha back then there was hardly any but any commercial uh, kombucha available i i wanted to learn and get into this full fledged i don't know if maybe it didn't make a biz- it was not a business decision back then but it was my calling and i went with my gut <laughs> i like to say that uh-huh. <laughs> yeah wonderful wonderful so how like so since 2019 to 2021 like how how have things been how did um like in that that time i think if if i if i am familiar as well i think i had a chance to do kombucha then as well in 2019 so the kombucha culture was there if i'm not wrong uh like uh, yeah so so how how had how had it changed since like from then to now um from the consumption standpoint i say that i would say that uh, as indians they are they are more aware about fermented foods and gut health and kombucha has a very big role to play mm-hmm. uh, because it is much more it is much more accessible in the market now and um, there are a lot of home brewers who have taken up this as a hobby um, and they are making it at home Uh, they are sharing it with their friends and family and spreading the word about it i think it's because of the pandemic year the things triggered more uh, but pre pandemic it was much slower um, i know uh, kombucha was av- available even in 2016 also for sure but uh, as if you ask me i think it's the the rate at which it is um, becoming popular is much higher now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thanks to the Pandemic. the rising of immunity boosting foods uh, of if, course yeah, if will, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. great great and like and and the business point of it how how things have changed in the business point of it uh, so when um, we began in 2018 actually 2018 when i was doing my preliminary research I, while i was still working with, uh, so i mean honestly i did not think of it as a business business i was mm-hmm. so enamored by the idea about learning about tasting uh, i knew that i want to make it as uh, my full time career but it was only in 2019 when i took the big decision of um, giving up my full time job and jumping into fermented foods business full time it is it is when my learning actually started um, from being a very product focused uh, approach i started to take a more consumer centric approach how do i match uh, the product benefits and features with what customers expect um, my whole underlying idea was to make the product uh, more accessible and uh, spread the word about Uh, the connection between gut health and uh, from entity foods mm-hmm. uh 2019 was more like a learning journey and that's where we also started to sell commercially um um we started to sell with specialty uh, gourmet stores in bangalore and also through our website meanwhile we uh, since i was doing it by myself that time um f- from my <laughs> from my bedroom yeah. uh, in the starting of 2019 there was a lot of learning a lot of challenges in production um and the first half was more about that but later on we overcome overcame those uh, we even shifted to a a, a production unit mm-hmm. and that's where the the growth in true sense began uh, learned a lot about uh, the standard business how how it it is and since i'm not from the fnb space i had not been from the fnb space uh, from the professional standpoint uh, making connections uh, networking was uh, was something very crucial i saw very crucial um, and i i still see that that you know knowing people and getting your name out there is i think very important for not just our business but for all small businesses out there 
yeah totally wonderful so um what would be like uh, see I, i have idea about kombucha and it good good things about fermented food uh, but what what like how does kombucha is different from any other drinks already available all right so i can tell you that kombucha is one of the most unique beverages you will ever get your hands on uh, one thing is that it is fermented another it is fermented but it is still non alcoholic because when you hear the word fermented you all obviously go to wines and beers because they are the fermented beverages but they happen to be alcoholic but kombucha is non alcoholic um, and the way it transforms the tea into something so unique is so mind blowing um it it kind of gives you a lot of creativity in as a as a producer as a kombucha brewer myself mm-hmm. it helps you play with ingredients the way um, a wine maker or a beer brewer plays with malts and yeasts and um, uh, grapes so that that kind of gave me a lot of uh, scope to play with it was more, not more like there was no rule rule book to book to play along with i had to write my own rules so kind of um what were we are talking about <laughs> sorry about that like so in the most basic sense kombucha is fermented ready to drink tea um you take Uh, black tea or green tea or any other tea which comes from the camellia sinensis plant um, even your regular uh, tea leaves that we use for our chai you take that you make a a, a concoction with, with sugar and you don't add milk to it you let it cool down and after which you add a culture uh, a culture called scoby which is nothing but symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast um there are uh, very specific bacteria and yeast that uh, live together naturally and when you give them sweet tea to consume they make it into kombucha um the process i mean you follow a certain process you keep it in a jar you let, let it ferment for at least 7 days and then you taste it and you would realize that it is it doesn't taste like tea anymore it is a little sweet little tart uh it may even have a little fizziness to it um it it's i mean it it's not like a say a, a juice or any sweet drinks or carbonated drinks it's mm-hmm. um much more nuanced it's um, it's got a lot of health benefits um and uh, it's little bit fizzy also so the idea of having a um, natural yet fizzy drink is is so fascinating i feel there is um, you can actually make some uh, any drink fizzy with naturally occurring uh, bacteria and yeast which I, i think that that's a very fascinating angle to kombucha and um this definitely makes kombucha a very unique drink yeah totally wonderful wonderful so just one one last question again so um what would be your advice to any one who wishes to become an entrepreneur or wishes to brew or wishes to learn the the art of making uh fermented foods or all of that what would be your advice to them i think uh, the number one thing that i would say to anybody who wants to get into entrepreneurship is uh to to have that sense of dedication to your uh, to your vision because um once you are confident with what you want to do you will find ways to make it happen well you would you would go to any length to make that happen um and anybody who wants to brew kombucha i i would say uh, learn as much as you can uh, and do a lot of work yourself get your hands dirty um because only when you do it yourself you learn and there is no replacement uh, yeah, for for okay. that mm-hmm. totally yeah so thank you very very much for being here and sharing your your story with with people really glad that you joined me thank you very very much again thank you very much